Good evening and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mir. Here we are on day 155 and I'm getting back to 1001 Arabian Nights and the Adventures of the Porter, which is now turning into the stories of the three calendars. Now you might remember that all these people had gathered together one evening in the house of Zobeda, Amina, and Sadie. And the porter was the first to join the company of the ladies. And then the three calendars came. And then Gafir and the, uh, the caliph joined the party as well with the caliph's head eunuch. Suddenly they're all there. And so Beta ends up bringing these dogs out and they're beaten. And at the end of this whole thing, there's some making up and tears from both the dogs and so Beta and then music and Amina falls down onto the floor in a swoon revealing that her neck is covered with scars. And Zobeda and Sadie are tending to her, and as they are, the caliph, he turns to the calendars and begins to inquire what is going on, realizes that the calendars are not part of the household. They know nothing as well. And remember, they get the porter to ask, what's happening? Zubayda gets very angry. Slaves come out with swords drawn, ready to chop off the heads of all the men. And the porter, there's a constant sense of, well, comedy for the entire thing because he begs that he be spared since he's really not responsible. He's always the victim. And so Zobeda begins to lighten up a little bit, and then she starts talking to the calendars to find out what their story is. Anyway, she says that, well, so long as each one of them honestly tells a story of who they are and how they got there, then all will be well. And she kind of lightens up a little bit, especially when the calendars, who she starts to question, she finds out that, well, they're not related as brothers. That was her first question. Are you brothers? Because all three of them are missing their right eye. And then she asks if they were born without their right eye and found out that that's not the case. And that the one calendar says, if you find out why I've lost my eye, you will be amazed because it's an incredible story. And the other two basically say the same thing, that their stories are incredible. <clears throat> and she also finds out at this point, one of the calendars lets her know that they are not of humble birth. All three of them are the sons of kings. And not only are they sons of kings, but they are sons of kings who are noted, well-known, and so at this point, Zobeda tells the guards that they can, well, lighten up their heavy hand, back off, but to stay present. She wanted to let the men know that she was ready, if need be, to do them in if they're not willing to behave. And... Remember that the porter told his story of how he got there, told Zubeda that she already knew. And again, this brought comedy to the situation. And uh, she said, okay, who's next? And the first calendar, he says, that he will tell a story. And so he begins. And he lets everyone know that he is the son of a king 
and that his father's brother lives and governs over a territory, a kingdom very close by. And his father's brother has a couple of children who are almost the same age as he is. And so he starts to get into the habit of going and seeing them and being with them and becomes very, very close to his uncle's son, his cousin. And they enjoy doing the same things and they share basically everything with each other. Um, you know, tell their secret wishes and longings and their secrets they reveal to each other. And every summer, because he is given more freedom than his cousins, he ends up going to his uncle's kingdom so that he can be with his two cousins. Well, one of these summers he goes spend time with his cousins and his you know, favorite friend. He, after they've hung out for quite a bit and gone, you know, riding and hunting and all the things that young men of those that age do, his cousin comes to him and says, I have something I want to share with you, but it has to be in the utmost secrecy. Are you willing to keep the secret? And he says, yes, of course. I'll keep any secret. And he says, great. I'll be back in a minute. And so he goes off and he returns with this most beautiful woman, their age, who he is obviously very much in love with. The two of them are very much in love. And they sit and they talk and no, he never learns the name of this woman and he doesn't inquire because he figures if his cousin would like him to know the name of his love, that he'll tell him. And if he doesn't, then that's fine by him because he's sworn to secrecy. And the less he knows, he figures the better. Well, after they have enjoyed each other's company for a good part of the evening, the one says to the other, my, my good friend, my best friend, will you stay here with my, my love, my sweetheart, and will you meet me in this building that I've constructed? I want to show it to you. I've been working on it for months, he said, and it's now ready. And I'm hoping that you will Bring, bring my sweetheart to me in this special place where I've been working and making this incredible construction. Will you meet me there? And they arrange a time, and of course he says yes. And so at the appointed time he goes. And his cousin is waiting for him there. And he... It's a, it's a dome and a building that's built in the cemetery. And when they get in there, inside this, this building, uh, there's a centerpiece that's made of stone, carved stone. And they go into the building, and his cousin begins to hammer away at this carved centerpiece. And after he's broken it up, he carefully takes each stone and places it in a corner of the room. And then with a shovel, he begins to dig underneath where this centerpiece had been placed. <clears throat> and after he's dug for some time, he reveals beneath the dirt, there's a stone, a pretty large stone. And once he's exposed it and he's made clear where all the lines of the stone are within the floor. He takes a pry bar and he begins to pry this stone open and up. And when 
once he gets the bar in with some effort and his cousin helps out, the two of them move this stone off. And he turns, the one young man turns to his love, his sweetheart, and says, this, this is the place I have been telling you about. And down the stairway is what I have created. Without looking back or around, she just looks down and begins to descend down the stairway. And then the one cousin turns to the other and he says, I'm going to bid you farewell. Please remember, don't tell anyone what you've seen tonight. And he says, what? Farewell? What are you talking about? And the cousin says, I'm departing, I'm going, and you will understand. But please, don't let anyone know where I have gone. And with this, he descends down the staircase. And as he does, he has this big stone in such a way that he can pull it back over the hole. And he does so, he puts it into place. Well, the calendar, he, well, he wasn't a calendar at that point. The son of the king goes back to his uncle's house. He goes back to his room he goes to sleep and he's quite sure that in the morning everything will be right his cousin will have returned and all will be well and so he lays himself down in the morning he gets up and he calls one of his trusted servants and he asks his servant to go and see how his cousin is doing and off the servant goes comes back sometime later and he says he wasn't in his room and I searched through the buildings where he normally is and I could find him nowhere. Well, Scheherazade stopped the story there and so we will as well. And tomorrow we'll continue. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day or evening.